<laughs> Woo, good morning. God bless you. Technical difficulties. Unbelievable. <laughs> good morning and welcome to the School of Holy Spirit. Welcome back from Winter Play. I'm always glad to be with us in the name of Jesus. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Free conference call. Hey, Instagram, what's going on? We're so glad that you're here. Please forgive me. We had some technical difficulties. We were not connecting to the internet. And then we got on and our app wasn't connecting. But we're here now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm here. I'm ready to go. I'm excited about what Pentecost is looking like for you and for me. So come on in, join us. Good morning. Welcome back from winter break. Yeah, winter break. Welcome back. Welcome back. I've been out preaching, teaching, healing, casting out devils. I didn't get a break. <laughs> I was out working, but it was wonderful. A powerful move of God. And I'm excited. I'm just excited for you. I'm excited for me. I'm excited about what God is doing. Pastor Rita Bill praying for you. Jacqueline Bowers. Hey, Dean, you up and moving? Praise the Lord. Come on in, guys. Hey, Brother Charles, I didn't see you yesterday. Washing it down. <laughs> Good morning, my bishop. Enjoyed you this morning. Good morning. God bless you guys. Just some real crazy stuff going on with my computer. Good morning, Wendy. Wendy, God bless you, Dean. Gladys Seals, Lady Vice, Sonia Gold, praying for you. I know all is well. God is so faithful. You're very faithful. Praise God. Deborah Sharp, Sylvia Spikes, Yvonne Reynolds, Deborah Wilson. Let's go. That's the William Limon. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you, Pat Kelly, Tracy Reynolds. Hey, darling. Y'all were gone by the time I got there yesterday. Deborah Shaw. Hey, D. Nicholson. Good morning. We are on. We are live. We are. Good morning, Zoomers. Hey. And free conference call. Good morning to our Instagram family, Sylvia247. Ethnic. God bless you, Rita Swain. Hey, Chef, it's on your page, please. Thank you so much as we build our following. We're so glad. Have yeah, our Instagram family is growing. Yes. Hey, Chaplain. Good morning. Yes, I was in um, Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland, Florida. I was preaching, teaching, and healing. Good morning, Pastor Colbert. He was there with me. Hey, Tanny, are you out in Alabama? All right, Rhonda Dooley, Pat Kelly, <clears throat> Dr. Beverly Brooks Summers, Barbara Jackson Weatherly. Good morning, Gloria Dean Flora. Good morning, Manisha Swain, Pat Kelly. Welcome back. Hey, Chaplain. Good morning, Felicia Coleman. Good morning, Evangelist. <laughs> As you all are coming on, please like that and share. Glory. Oh, we going deep. We going deep today. We going deep today. <laughs> we going to the blasphemy of Holy Spirit. Yep. Get your questions ready. Holy Spirit Basics 101 continues, and we are going to get into a very controversial subject uh, that has to do with blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Can I blaspheme the Holy Spirit? And is that the unforgivable sin? <laughs> Come on in. Good morning, Monica Monet. Good morning, Charlie. Barbara Jackson Weatherly. Y'all come in like take and share. Hey. And oh, you did, Sister Green. Praise God. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, MCFWC. What's up? Betty Mathis. Good morning, Pastor Janine Daly. Hey. You got your butt. I listen. That spiritual Bible is all right. Evangelist Kathy Hawkins. Good morning. Gloria Thomas, Wanda Sue. So I've been up all night doing papers, right? Because I was behind. 
And I said to myself, self, if you lay down, you're going to miss Pentecost in the pandemic. <laughs> and so I dare not. <laughs> I dare not lay down. <laughs> hey, come on in. Yes, come on in. Come on in, come on in. Yes, we are here live. Pray, Tim. Come on in, come on in. Listen, let me tell you something about this Holy Ghost. Can I just give y'all a testimony? So last week I was at the uh, New Bethel Amy Church in Lakeland, Florida. And it was amazing, amazing. So thank you, Valerie. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie Williams, Mark Bunny, Linda Atlas. Good morning, Overseer Ryan. What's up? Looking good. Happy birthday, sir. <laughs> Elder Barbara Token. Good morning, beloved. Mary Ann Davis. Hey, darling. Juanisha Sway. Happy New Year to you. Pat Kelly. Come on, Camilla Cook. Let's go. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I would have been out. So I was at the New Bethel Amy Church, uh, Pastors Lake, my uh, husband and wife team, amazing. And ever since I uh, got into the um, move of God with the Methodist Church, particularly the AME Church, there's always been this love affair between me and um uh, the Amy Church. So back in November, Bishop Reed invited me to the 11th Episcopal Planning Meeting services and Holy Spirit just moved. And so from that now has come many, many, many um, wonderful opportunities to go back into the AME Church with the message of Pentecost. So a shout out to uh, Pastor Dr. Leroy Adams, who started it in 1983. So I'm, I'm, I'm at uh, this New Bethel church, right? And this couple walks up to me and they are just gorgeous. They are just beautiful. And um, they say to me, 30, Three years ago, or 38 years ago, I forget, we were at St. Paul in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And we were sitting up in the balcony and you called us out and ministered to us. And we both received spirit baptism. And it's been 38 years ago, right? I was like, oh my God, we are 92 years old. Both the husband and the wife, 92, 92. And they looked like they were 35. They said, because we received baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have never been the same. We've never been in another balcony. <laughs> I just thought, and I said, are you serious? They said, yes. And we've been married 71 years. What? <laughs> 71 years. So that was such a testimony. Dr. Leroy Adams, uh, Bishop Jackson, is a member of this church. He retired and moved to Lakeland, Florida. And so he is in this church as one of its senior uh, retired pastors. And um, just being that his son, uh, Reverend Lewis, Dr. Adels, felt, uh, flew in from Pennsylvania and other pastors that had been a part of it. So we estimated about 125 leaders that got baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, while I was there in 1983 are now pastoring. Some are district elders, some are senior pastors, some are bishops. But just from that one revival, 1983. And then this little 92-year-old couple, you would never guess 
that they are 92. Nothing about them. She had her lashes on. She was smart and sharp. He was sharp. They still drive and get along. But they remembered the meetings of 1983. And so these Holy Ghost moves, I don't want you to miss them. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't want you to miss them. So I'll be back in Orlando. I think it's like March the 22nd or something. And I'll be there with Bishop Breed again for the 11th Episcopal District. So that's, that's, <laughs> Evangelist Keeper said she was 13. That's the move of God. Hey, Pastor Folsom, good morning. God bless you. Miss Shima, good morning. Uh, Apostle Fonz. Uh, I, I am, thank you. I that dude, I love you. Thank you. So I'm going to be teaching for the next couple of days about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy of Holy Spirit. We are going to dig in deep. There's my spiritual director, my sister, Dr. Jessica Ingram. I'm telling you, it was, it's still, and it's still brewing. It's still brewing. That was the move of God. So, you know, you can be just one moment from a connection that will last you the rest of your life. You know, one moment from a connection. And so there's this love affair that I have with the AME Church and being a part of shifting, if you will, and disrupting uh, the status quo and moving them towards Pentecost. So that's a great thing. Also, Holy Ghost Cathedral, celebrating 50 years <clears throat> since its inception, 1972. My precious father and mother obeyed God. We could not celebrate in 2022. So we're celebrating in 2023. I sure would love to see all y'all there. If you can get to the gala, March the 31st. People are coming from every which way. So I'm just excited about my life and what God is doing. Denise Wellens Glover, good morning. Dr. Patricia James. I want to talk about Mishiba. Thank you, Mishiba. I want to talk about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. What it is and what it is not. What it is and what it is not. So blasphemy of the Holy Spirit basically is to be disrespectful. To simply be disrespectful. Brenda Ann Brown, she said, I met you at St. Paul's. Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> that was 1983. <clears throat> and 84. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop Jackson. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. How, how, how about that? So blasphemy in, in its most simplest form. Good morning, Raymond. God bless you. Hey, sister to sister, what's up? Come on, collection. Age of Publishing. To all of you joining me from everywhere. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Coming up the timeline. Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. I had this question when I was in Lakeland. And I said, you got to tune in because I'm going to be dealing with it this week. What is blasphemy? So, first of all, D. Dwayne, good morning. Dr. Ingram, oh my God, 1983? At Greater Allen's Women's Conference. <laughs> Listen, this is what Dr. Ingram says. At, I first encountered you in 1983. Yeah, because after I left St. Paul's, uh, Bishop John Bryant came to St. Paul during the revival because he had just left their pastoring. And so he brought me immediately to Bethel in Baltimore. I bet Jamal, he was 11. <laughs> oh my God. And he called his friend, Floyd Flake, who was the pastor of Allen AME. And uh, that's how I moved from St. Paul, Cambridge, 
to Bethel, Baltimore, to Allen AME, New York, then to St. Paul's in Bermuda, and I believe St. James. So I was in probably the AME Church about 10 years pouring in. And she said, and I thought, who is this woman? <laughs> Somebody you needed to know. <laughs> Praise God, somebody you needed to know. And God has been doing it ever since. So get your paper Bibles. Let's go and start digging in because this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. What is blasphemy of Holy Spirit? What is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Well, blasphemy is to be disrespectful. To be disrespectful, to not um, hold um, that person or that um, space in honor. <laughs> Didn't know we would be best buddies, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Thing, and I thank God for it. Blaspheming of the Holy Spirit, eighty-three, eighty-four. Well, Ebenezer, I came. That had to be. 80, it might have been 80, I think it was 83, it might have been because Granger got the call from the presiding elder while I was at St. Paul, and I promised that I would go with him, and of course, the rest is history. <laughs> Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is to be disrespectful. Blasphemy of your mom, blasphemy of your dad. Blasphemy of your leaders. Blasphemy simply means to be disrespectful, to be dishonorable, all right? So I don't want you to make it more complicated than it is. And one of the things that I love to do is to make it simple, to make it simple. So we're going to read. Yeah. And let's go back to <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 in your paper Bible. <laughs> Still got a little, the tingle. <clears throat> now this text is very, very seriously important about how we should treat Holy Spirit. And I want to start in verse 22. I want to start in verse 22. Then one was brought to him who was demon possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and the mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitude were amazed and said, <clears throat> could this be the son of David? Now, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or high or house divided against itself cannot stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. <laughs> Therefore, they shall be your, I'm sorry, how then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons, listen, by the Spirit of God, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, I need you to hear that. How does Jesus cast out demons? By the Spirit of God, all right? I want somebody to write that down. Somebody grab that. Somebody grab that for me. How did Jesus cast out demons? 
He cast out demons by the spirit of God. All right. And we have seen this in the text from Luke chapter four, that it was the spirit of God that moved Jesus. It was the spirit of God that empowered Jesus. Now, let's just get some context. So Jesus is casting out devils. And those who are kind of on the demonic side, they are saying that he is using the same power that they use, which was the power of Beelzebub. Now, you do your research. Beelzebub was allegedly the chief ruler of the demonic world. And so what they were doing is saying that Jesus was using demonic power to cast out demons. Jesus says, if a kingdom is against itself, it cannot stand. So I can't cast out demons using another demon. But I cast out demons by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is very, very important. This is very, very, very important. Or how can, verse 29, <laughs> one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder the house. Now, you're going to see why we are starting in verse 22. I want you to get the context of why we're starting, Camille. I want you to understand the context of what is going on so far. Are you with me? All right. He says, now, he who is not with me is against me. Wow. Okay. And he who does not gather scatters. Now, he's making it really, 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 really plain. He's, he's really, really, really separating what is the power of Satan and what is the power of God. When Paul says, I want to know him, and I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, he is talking about the spirit of God. Because it is the spirit of God that is the power of resurrection. All right? I need you to grab a hold of that. Grab a hold of that. Because we're going somewhere. We're going to drill deep. <laughs> Hallelujah. John Blocker says Jesus is so cool. He was. The, the historical Jesus walked the earth. He was just cool, calm, and collected. All right? Stay with me now. Stay with me. Hey, Omega George. So watch this. Now, therefore, verse 31, I say to you, listen, that every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit of God or against Holy Spirit, depending on your translation, will not be forgiven. I need you to hear that. That's very powerful. Keep in context what he is addressing. He is addressing the disrespect of Holy Spirit. He is addressing them dishonoring Holy Spirit as the power that was behind the miracle. They are being disrespectful. Now, uh, Wendy has pulled it up. Thank you, Wendy. In the, in the uh, message, there's nothing done or said that can't be forgiven. But if you deliberately persist, in your slanders against God's spirit, you are repudiating the very one who forgives. 
if you reject the son of man out of some misunderstanding, Holy Spirit can't forgive you. But when you reject Holy Spirit, you are sawing off the branch on which you are sitting, severing by your own perversity all connection with the one who forgives. Good God Almighty. <laughs> I need you to hear that. So when you speak against Jesus out of some crazy moment, some misunderstanding you have with God, Holy Spirit will forgive you. But when you speak poorly, when your mouth dishonors Holy Spirit, who then can forgive you since Holy Spirit is activating the forgiveness process? It is Holy Spirit that activates the forgiveness process. <laughs> Mother Pearl, God bless you. I need somebody to get this. I need you to make this easy to understand. So, if I speak a word against God, I, I run into people and say, I'm mad at God. Oh, okay. Okay. How, how's that going to work out? I don't know, but okay, right? And then I hear people say, you know, I just don't think sometimes Jesus hears me or Jesus loves me or, you know, whatever, whatever you're going through at that moment. You know, I was praying the other day. Watch this. And the Holy Spirit said to me, ask the people, when are they going to make their emotions obey God? Ask the people, when are you going to make your emotions obey the Holy Ghost? When are you going to make your emotions obey the Holy Ghost? When are you going to make your emotions submit to Holy Spirit? I said, you want me to ask the people that? He said, I do. When are you going to ask to finally say to your emotions, you're going to submit to the Holy Ghost? I'm sick of you showing out, mouthing off, having your own way. I'm sick of it. And from today, I am submitting all of y'all, all of you emotions to Holy Spirit. When are you going to finally make your emotions submit to the Holy Spirit? I need somebody, I need somebody to hear me today. <laughs> because I'm honest to God, this is crazy what's going on out here. It's crazy. This is absolutely ludicrous what is going on out here. And there's no reason for it other than you are just showing out. Why are you showing out? <laughs> now, if you run in your mouth and you got an art with God or you got an art with Jesus or you get disrespectful or you get uh, insolent or you get, you know, you know how we get before we submit those emotions. Listen to this. The word says that Holy Spirit will forgive you. If you speak a word against Jesus or you speak a word against the Father, you will be forgiven for the Holy Spirit, or for Holy Spirit, I got to remove that article. Holy Spirit is the one that activates the process of forgiveness. So you have not grieved Holy Spirit. You have not offended Holy Spirit. 
but you mad at Jesus or you mad at God, whatever. But watch this, watch this. When you are loose mouthed about Holy Spirit, that is, that right there is what cannot be forgiven. Because if you've offended or grieved Holy Spirit, or you've spoken disrespectfully, or you have spoken um, ignorantly of Holy Spirit, then who is going to forgive you? <laughs> now, again, God wants to be more than involved in your emotions. He wants you to submit those emotions. Thank God you were able to maintain but we got to get to the point where it don't even come up on the radar to show out. <laughs> now, watch this. Anyone, I'm going to read this again, who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against Holy Spirit, it will not, cannot be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Now, I'm telling you, I've seen some people pretty close to blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I, I've been in probably every denomination, Protestant, Pentecostals, and all of the variations, Catholic, I've been there. And one of, I've been, well, maybe two or three, uh, one was a Baptist pastor and Jackson was with me and uh, Keith Grayton, my son that went home to be with the Lord. And we were at Fireball McKinney's church. I believe it was in DC. Uh, Bishop has to tell me if I'm right about that. Now, if it's not in DC, it's right around DC. And uh, he had called me on the phone and he had talked to me about uh, all that he had heard and how you know he wanted to, to bring me in. So this is in the city, come on. <laughs> Absolutely, Graham. <laughs> and um, we got there and God was moving in this Baptist church. Oh my God, God was moving in this Baptist church. Valerie, I'm telling you, I, I saw got to is it dc dr patricia and um about the third night i could see that the pastor was annoyed people was jam-packed it wasn't that large of a facility it was very nice but it wasn't that large maybe 200 people and that meeting began to grow and by thank you maureen by the middle of the uh meeting i could tell he was annoyed <clears throat> and there was probably about 300 people stuck up in that place we had people sitting in the choir saying everything and i and, and he he just was not having it so i get there on that thursday and i could tell he was kind of tight but the people was coming from every which way and um uh, it was it was it was a great meeting, and then his wife got filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, he hit the he hit the he it hit the fan, baby. Then his deacons got filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey, <laughs> Woo, Tracy Reed. Oh my God. Good morning, Pastor John. He was so uncomfortable. So that Friday when I got to the service, story time, y'all got to lean in. He had had his elders, his leaders waiting for me in the office. They're going to throw me out to church. And um, I went in, I was like, I looked around, I was like, what is going on? And he went on to itemize what he didn't like. He didn't like me speaking in tongues. He didn't like me getting other people speaking in tongues. He didn't like me pushing people down. He didn't like uh, 
the fact that I was prophesying to people. He felt that I um, had talked to the people and that I had some type of inside track. He was annoyed. He was so angry. Woo, he was angry. So he said, uh, well, if you're not going to stop doing what you're doing, we're going to close the meeting. You won't preach tonight. And I was tempted to say, okay. But I thought about the people. I thought about the people. Marcella Smith, Pat Kelly, good morning. Coming up the timeline, Erica Benet. God bless you, Wanisha Swank. Come on, y'all got to hear this. So I said, well, give me a few minutes. Let me go out and, and just pray about it. So uh, uh, Bishop Jackson was there. He wasn't a bishop then. I wasn't a bishop. And Keith was there. And I said, let me find a spot I can pray. So I found where, where they hung their robes. And I just walked in between and started praying in tongues. I said, Lord, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Ah. <laughs> Holy Spirit speak, Holy Spirit activate. I didn't know that then, but it was the same thing. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me clear and said, it's up to you. Whatever you do, I will back you. If you leave, I will back you. If you stay, I will back you. I said, all right, Holy Ghost. So I went back in and I said, um, Dr. McKinney, I'm so sorry that you are disannoyed because you called me. I didn't call you. You sent for me. I just sent for you. And so I would have, have, have hoped that you would have vetted me before you invited me. You need to vet me because I'm not an ordinary preacher. I am a shifter of cultures and atmospheres. And when I leave the church, it's better that I had not come than for you to have me come and then try to tear up everything that I did. I said, that won't, that won't go well. I said, because you are saying that Holy Spirit is not in charge. You are saying that I am in charge. He said this, no, that's not what I said. No, that's what you, look, you started, you called me. I didn't call you. I was speaking in tongues before I got here. And it doesn't matter if I lay, you're laying hands on the people and they're falling out. I said, I don't have to touch anybody. If the spirit of the Lord is moving, then they fall out. I don't have anything to do with that. I don't want you to go down. If you're going to stay tonight, if you're not going to go down on the floor, and you're going to leave my people alone. You're not going to touch anybody. I said, well, all right, that's fine. I'll agree to stay. And I'll agree not to touch anybody. I said, but I cannot be responsible for what Holy Spirit will do. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I said, go easy, sir. Go easy. You'd be better off cussing me out. Holy Spirit. Oh, he just got so nasty. <laughs> Woo! He got so nasty. Dr. Trish in that room, I'm telling you, I almost, I'm telling you, I, 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 I was just in a mature place. <laughs> Jackson said, Herbert Jackson said, you ready to go? We ready to go. And I think, I think Keith was a little nervous, but Jack, you know, he was ready to fight. <laughs> He's a, He's an aristocratic thug. <laughs> He's an aristocrat. And I'm telling you, he was awful. He was awful. He was the worst. Had on $1,000 suits and $1,000. He was a well-dressed older gentleman. Very. And so while I was in his office, I said, what has offended you? I said, what have I done? The people are coming. The people are giving. I said, miracles are happening. People are getting saved and filled with all God. What has annoyed me is you and this Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost here. Holy Ghost there. Everywhere, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost here. Holy Ghost there. Literally, this is the conversation that this man was having with me. And I got to the point, Dr. Janetta, I got to the point, I got scared for him. 
That's all you talking about. How, uh, 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 how, uh, how to live a high impact life with the Holy Ghost. What about Jesus? What about just all these people? They thought, oh, he was hot with me. But he was really annoyed by the Holy Ghost. And you and this Holy Ghost, you just, oh, I just want you to go in there, preach the death. The burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't you touch anybody. While he was doing all that ranting and raving, my eyes slid over on his desk. And there was a old revival flyer. And it said, Fireball McKinney comes to town. Healings, signs, and wonders. I looked at the flyer. You know how we put things up under the glass on top of my desk. And I moved things. I said, is this you? Fireball McKinley? Is this you, the person that this guy is talking about? A man of miracles, signs and wonders. And that ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking to you about. I said, sir, it's got everything to do. I don't know why you're so angry, why you're so hostile. But I'm going to go out there tonight. God said he got me. And I'm going to preach because of the people. Because of the people, I'm going to go. So we went out there. I, I was preaching, living the high impact life. I never will forget. Living the high impact life. I'm preaching, 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 preaching. I get ready to do the altar call. And then I remember I can't go down on the floor. So I just started worshiping. I just started worshiping. I just started worshiping. And about that time, I looked up and the children were coming to the altar. And when I finished, you know, kind of just keeping my eyes closed, and I looked down there, the altar was full of children. Now, the man that told me, if you go down, you, you going out of here. I'm going to have them pick you up and throw you out of here. You and that Holy Ghost. You and that Holy Ghost. <laughs> I know some of y'all say that now. Can't go bitch and ball in that Holy Ghost. Good morning, Holy Ghost. Good morning, Holy Spirit. When the children started coming, he was sitting there with his, he had a, a pocket watch. He's sitting there with his big looking at it. Like I told you 20 minutes, I want you to get up and get down. It's Friday night. Anybody been to my Friday night service? It looked like we can go to midnight because the spirit is so high. And the spirit of the Lord was so high. The worship was so high. I heard a little girl on my right down, and she was just praying, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I walked over to the little girl. I said, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I ain't touch her. I said, just hold your head back and open your mouth. And it wasn't 30 seconds. I don't know who the girl, little girl was, but I'm telling you, Fireball McKinney got so mad. He said, that's enough. That's enough. By that time, the deacon said, no, brother pastor. These are our children. Glory. These are our children. And she's not hurting our children. Our children want this Holy Spirit. Our children want no brother pastor. You're not going to stop her tonight. You know, because in some of them Baptist churches, the trustee board and the deacons run them churches, not them pastors. He got so furious. That was probably, <laughs> the, uh, I am, that was probably my first time meeting someone personally that I knew was on the verge of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I was in Niagara Falls, New York, and he's still alive, so I can't call his name. But he was awful. I was down on the floor ministry. Woman of God, don't you prophesy to anybody else. I turned around, I looked, I said, excuse me? You don't prophesy to anybody else in my church. I said, okay, you you come back up in the chancel. <laughs> I said, okay. 
So I, I, I went back to preaching. Because, you know, when you're in somebody else's house, you do what they say, right? That was my second one. And he, I'm telling you, that man has never succeeded in anything. He's been in church after church after church. And he has never succeeded. My third time. Listen, listen, I got stories. <laughs> I got stories. Oh, he was awful. Now, now, they <laughs> call his name. His name was Carlton. Was it Woodard? Wood, 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 Woodard? Oh, he was awful. He was just awful. He was awful. You, you in here prophesying. Don't, don't go down that road. Well, you know, Holy Spirit is just moving. Uh, 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 no, that's not the whole, I'm preaching. I'm a preaching here. That's not the Holy Spirit. I'm done my spirit baptism. You don't need to speak in tongues. <laughs> that ain't, I'm preaching. That's what he's sitting behind me saying. That that ain't that that ain't that ain't that that ain't who that Ooh. awful just awful did I get it right doc awful I I call your names now <laughs> I'm telling you I've been in situations I was had a young man in my church he was evil his mother his grandmother was the mother of our church with my mother and he was evil he was just evil evil just evil and he got cancer he married one of the girls in our church and he got cancer and uh oh he was evil just evil to anybody and everybody so mother kennedy asked me if i would go and pray for him and i said i'll go mother i said but you know i don't visit hospitals i got a team for that I'm a rancher. I'm not a shepherd. And she said, but for me, I said, for you, I will go. I went. He had this tumor that was so big in his stomach that the doctors couldn't close his stomach up. And this was one of those times as a nurse, I knew that I was walking in a death chamber. I knew he was going to die. And they were coming in and were using mesh. At that time, there was just a brand new pr protocol. And uh, he was oozing out. Everything was coming out of it. Oh, it was terrible. And I, um, his mother came in and said, hey, baby. He turned his head. She said, I got Bishop Vaughn here. He turned his all the way over. He didn't want to deal with me. I said, well, I'm not going to be here long. I said, but I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. He looked at me. I don't want Jesus. And don't you come in with that Holy Ghost. I said, son, if you received it, I believe God will add days to your life. I don't want Jesus. And I don't want that Holy Ghost. I said, mother, let's go. By the time we got back to the house, he was dead. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Listen, folks, listen to me carefully. I, I, I need to, I, I, want, I want you to hear this. I realize that we have been very much in a deficit when it comes to our teaching in the Holy Spirit. I know that we have been in a deficit. Now, this is not just, oh, you're convicted by the Holy Spirit and you just do it anyway. No, this is something much more than that. This is when you are willfully and intentionally disrespectful of the Holy Ghost. Listen to me carefully. When your mouth, when your ways are dishonorable to Holy Spirit, you are on the edge. You are on the ledge. I had to get up out of there. 
Ooh, I'm telling you. Now, this is not just, I don't want to be saved. This is a open, willful, intentional, evil act of dishonoring the Holy Spirit. Even those of you, listen to me now, listen to Bishop, listen to me, that get it in your, you preachers, that will not extend the invitation for people to receive spirit baptism. You are intentional on not doing it. You know better. You yourself have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but you will not extend it to your people. You are deliberately withholding spirit baptism from your people that are in your care. I'm not talking about you didn't know. I'm not talking about uh, uh, time was short. I'm talking about week in and week out, you are deliberately withholding the good news of Holy Spirit intentionally, whether it is fear, whether it's denominationalism, or whether it, you just don't think it's valuable. That is dishonoring Holy Spirit. I, I, I need us to hear, listen to me carefully. It cannot be forgiven. I'm not saying, you know, sometimes, you know, we can get in a jam and, and, and time is short. You know, somebody call you up, you know, and you say, listen, I want to make an offer, an appeal to you for Jesus Christ. And, you know, and those of you that need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, we want to open the altar, although our time is short. There are people here who can minister to you. There's always a way to do it. Those of you that are intentionally withholding the good news of spirit baptism from people in your altar calls. You are on the verge of dishonoring Holy Spirit. He is just as important as receiving Christ. He's just as important as the death burial resurrection of jesus christ he is just as important vitally important for that new believers sanctification and that new believers maturity so when you are deliberately intentionally withholding holy spirit you are on the verge Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? I'm telling you. He said, if you speak a word against Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven you folks. This is why I'm telling you right now. Ooh, oh my God. Oh my God. Listen to Glennis. Listen, Glennis says, uh, no teaching about being filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the people are not growing. No signs and wonders. No souls being added. I'm telling you. This, this is an all. <laughs> Marcella says, where's the shepherd? I, I'm, I'm sounding the alarm. Now, we're going to get into what happens when you deliberately disobey the Holy Spirit. Now, that becomes something other than blasphemy. So remember that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit, that, that is you insult the Holy Spirit, you insult the Holy Ghost, or you quench. Those are the 
three errors that you make with Holy Spirit that is not going to work out good for you. He said, if you speak evil of Jesus, you can be forgiven. If you speak evil of the Father, you can be forgiven. But if you speak evil of Holy Spirit, you cannot be forgiven. Now, what does that say to you about the value of Holy Spirit to the Godhead? For Jesus to say, talk bad about me, we got you. Talk bad about the Father. We got you. But for Jesus to say, if you continue to put your mouth on the Holy Ghost, that the work I'm doing, that I'm using demonic power, when I use Holy Spirit to cast out devils, the kingdom of God has come in your midst. And you would take what I'm doing and pervert it and turn it into a Beelzebub. And those are three areas we are going to dig in. This is Holy Spirit Basics 101. I'm telling you, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit, and quenching the Holy Spirit. We are going to dig into that. Many of you think it's a demon or you think you're in some type of spiritual battle or you feel like you have, have, have uh, the devil on your track all the time. I'm telling you, you've got to go back, examine your words, examine your actions. Have I grieved Holy Spirit? Have I quenched you Holy Spirit? Lord, Lord God, it, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. Forgive me. This is why so many people are dying sick. You just going to trample on Holy Spirit's boundaries? How long do you think you can get along, away with that? You're just going to not change. You're just never going to submit those emotions to Holy Spirit. You just going to cuss. You're just going to get mad all the time. You're just going to show out every time. Really? How long do you think you can trample on Holy Spirit without some awful consequence happening to you. You're just going to disobey your parents. You just outgrown. I really? You are trampling on the most precious, most sensitive, most, most intimate part of the Godhead. You're being careless. You are being stubborn. There is, listen, and if you get to a position where you have grieved Holy Spirit or you have quenched Holy Spirit or for God's sake, you have gotten on the edge of blasphemy of Holy Spirit, how are you going to ever get healed and delivered? How, how do you think that's going to work out for you? I never will forget. I was clowning. I was I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and still clowning. I was I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and still clowning. This is a long time ago. I had not submitted my emotions to Holy Spirit. I had not submitted my body to Holy Spirit. I was spirit baptized, speaking in tongues, but I was still fornicating. I was still doing smoking, smoking weed, doing all of that. I was showing out. I'm telling you, listen to me. Listen to me. And I re I never will forget one night I was sleeping in my bed. The girls were asleep. And I woke up. The Holy Spirit woke me up. 
and all I could see around me was a cesspool. I don't even know what it, what a cesspool is, but I knew that night that's what has surrounded my bed and alligators was in it and filth was in it. And I knew that if I got up out of that bed, that was going to be the end of me. My children would have found me the next morning without life. And there was young girls, they were small girls. Now you think I'm gonna go back after that warning? And do what I was doing? No, 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 no. Some of y'all are just stubborn. Holy Spirit, you have received spirit baptism. You speak in tongues and you still smoking, cussing, lying. You still doing everything that you was doing before you got spirit baptized. When are you going to make your emotions obey and submit to holy spirit when do you not realize that you're grieving holy spirit you're not proving to nobody that you're wrong or you you ain't got to do what nobody say you're grieving holy spirit holy spirit then told you now you can stay in this spot where you at but i'm gonna tell you God got a way. He'll open up a little door. So I'm going to show up. You weren't expecting it. And you out of here. And can't nobody pray you back. Because you refuse to yield to Holy Spirit. Everybody is not dying because of disease. People are dying because of disobedience and grieving of the Holy Ghost. Listen to me carefully, folks. Three things that we are going to dig in this, this week. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Grieving the Holy Spirit. And quenching Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you right now, not nary one of those will work out good for you. Not nary one. And if nine million people don't eat and pray for you. It won't stop the consequence. Because you have grieved. You have quenched Holy Spirit. You cannot. You cannot say I didn't hear you. You cannot hear. You cannot say he did, I didn't know. You know and you did it anyway. There is a, a, a period of time. A grace period. But you can feel when the Holy Spirit is tightening up on you. And you just going to trample over that. But we're going to talk about it. Blasphemy, grieving, and quenching of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if you speak evil of the Father, you will be all right. Holy Spirit will still forgive you. If you speak evil of me, it's all right. Holy Spirit will still forgive you. But if you speak evil, you disrespect, you dishonor, you willfully continue to disobey Holy Spirit. Now you want all the Christians to pray for you. No, he told you. He speaks to us. You heard him. This is a serious hour. It's a serious hour, folks. I'm going to drill down. I'm going to drill down. I got to get up out of here. <laughs> Woo, my God, my God, my God. Woo, Rabbi Shkataba. Some of you go into prayer lines. I just hear this by the Spirit, just dropped in my spirit. You go to prayer lines and you ask people to pray for you but you're still disobedient to the Holy Spirit. You ask people to lay hands on you. You ask people to put your name on, on their lips of prayer, but you have grieved the Holy Spirit. There is nothing that heaven can do for you until you ungrieve Holy Spirit. I don't know if we are, I don't know if we understand this. 
Some of you just always complaining about your finances, always complaining about your money, and never stop to say, Holy Spirit, have I grieved you? Have I grieved you? Have I insulted you in any way? Because my money ain't supposed to be like this. My, my health is not supposed to be like this. Have I grieved you in some way? Have I insulted you? Have I dishonored you, Holy Spirit? Show it to me, Lord, so that I might repent, so that you might forgive me. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, forgive us. Give us. Oh, I see it, Pastor. We're in the moment I see adulterers just preaching and going on and, and all of that sexual sin, everything. I've seen it. Just speaking in time. I see God is so merciful. Because you've received spirit baptism and you still will not walk by his convictions. He convicts you. He's convicted you. But you're just going to force it. Okay. Let's see how that works. I got to get up out of here. <laughs> God bless you guys. I'm so glad to be back. Welcome back from winter break. We're going to drive it all, all of this week. Praise God by the, by, the, by, by the mercies and the grace of God. Praise God. I love you guys. I got to get up out of here. I am Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn. I am a pneumatologist. I teach Holy Spirit. Listen to me very carefully. I love you. I love you too much to lie to you. Holy Spirit is your best advantage. Your greatest ally in the earth is Holy Spirit. You don't want to grieve him. You don't want to quench him. You don't want to insult him. You don't want to go any place and he refuses to go with you. And you don't want him to shut up. You want him yelling at you. You want him speaking to you. You don't want him to go silent on you. He is your greatest ally in the earth. Let's examine ourselves. Examine our conversations. Examine our behavior. Holy Spirit, have I grieved you in any way? Have I have I wounded you in any way? I'm so sorry. I gotta go. Woo Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God.